Hello everybody and welcome to a Dosember video. We're going to be looking at Winbox for 86box. So in the previous videos I've been looking at this project called 86box and somebody in the comments very kindly, no I don't want to cherish my pictures or documents. So somebody very kindly in the comment suggested I had a look at Winbox for 86box and that's what we're going to do today. This is the GitHub page for it and we just go to releases. The latest release of this video is 1.1. One guy selects the EXE version. So oh, downloaded quite a small program. Yes, I want to keep the file. Obviously not that many people download this. And then let's open it up again. Yes, Windows, I really do trust this. Now, uh, I'm just going to install it for me and I'm going to have it create a desktop shortcut. Yes, install, excellent. Launch Winbox for 86 box. So finish. Ah, see, that reminds me of the nice old PCs beige. Updating emulator, Winbox did not detect any install version 86 box. That's correct, I've gone afresh. So no other installation what I had before. Uh, do you want to download and install the latest version? Well, yes I do. So this is really handy in that it's actually going out and it's downloading all the ROMs and everything and it's downloading the latest version for me. So I don't have to worry about that. Here's the interface. So this looks very VirtualBox-esque. Performance. Okay, so we can see the CPU usage of the virtual machines that we make. And obviously the home page is where we're going to be making our new machines. Now, the limitation with 86 box was that what I showed you was a machine. We set up a machine and that was it. We could only set up one machine. Whereas this, we can set up multiple old machines and have them in a list down here. So if I go to file, uh, go to new virtual machine, it, it takes me through a nice wizard and this is a nice easier uh, introduction I think to 86 box. You don't have to know all of the exact requirements of what your machine needs to be. Now, for example, I'm going to do a 386 machine. So I'm just going to call it a 386 box. So you can store it in a certain directory. I think it defaults to yeah, the documents folder, which is fine. If we go next. Now this is where we can select the manufacturer of the machine. So maybe we want a compact, uh, Procilio, uh, that, that was Windows 95 and 98. So it even gives you an example of what supported operating systems you can install on this. I'll tell you what, we're going to go with a compact portable, maybe 386 or what shall we go with? IBM. Oh, there's loads of choices here. Uh, PS2 model 80. And then you just got generic. Maybe we go with a multimedia 386. Yeah, let's go with a multimedia 386 based. So we can install DOS on it. We can even install early versions of Windows. Windows 3. Dot. Let's go next. And um, what type of CPU do I want? Uh, so I could have Intel or AMD's or Citrix's version. I remember I had a Citrix processor. I think it was a 166, but yeah, uh, Intel 386, why not? Memory, uh, I'm not going to be greedy. I'm just going to go with the straight eight megabytes. Video memory, 512 would do. And a printer, do I want a printer? Oh, wow, and a laser right. Okay, cool. For the moment, I'm going to say no to that, and then we're going to go next. And then oh, this gives us a predefined hard drive space or predefined hard drive setup uh, for us. So 121 megabytes is plenty enough for a 386. We can add a CD-ROM if we want. And then we go next and everything is ready. So show me more settings after the creation. We can do this just to uh, change the config if we want. Let's go next. There we go. We've got our 386 box. Oh, and we've got all the extra settings. Now, this is 86 boxes settings that we've seen pre in a previous video. So we can go in and tweak this specifically if we want. So we've got the graphics card there, sound card there. 
I think I'm going to change that to a Sound Blaster 16. In a previous video, I chose none for MIDI out, and somebody did point out in the comments that actually I do have to select a MIDI out device. So I can use System MIDI if I want, or if I've got a nice uh, sound font collection, I can use Fluid Synth. But for the moment, I'm going to use System MIDI. Network, there's no network card in this, and I don't want to put it on the internet anyway. So yeah, that looks good. We'll click OK. What if we want to put some discs into this? Well, let's load it up. Let's click on the start. And then here's our BIOS loading up, clicking away, eight megabytes. Oh, and the CMOS, basically, yeah, this has never been booted up before. So we've got to choose to set up our BIOS. Auto detect hard drive, that's always a good thing to do. And yep, it's detected all the right cylinders, heads and sectors. Yep, accept parameters, I say yes. And then drive D, no, there's no drive D. And right to CMOS and exit. Brilliant, so that's the BIOS set up, but obviously we need to put some disks into here. So uh, we've got the icons down the bottom like normal, so we can choose floppy and then choose existing image. Now somewhere I have downloaded MS-DOS 3.3, which came on two disks. If I choose disk one and then open, press when ready, and then hopefully we're just gonna wait a while and it will boot up. Ah, no, it won't. Why won't it boot up? I've spotted the mistake. It's set up with a 1.2 megabyte floppy disk. But actually, the disks that I've got are 360k ones. So I need to go into. Oh, sorry, floppy two is five and a quarter inch, 1.2 meg. That's, I think, where I need to put my disk. Yeah, we need to change this round a bit. Let's close that. So, how do we edit this? So right click on it, hardware settings. What I need to do is go to floppy drives. I need to change this to a five and a quarter inch, 360. Brilliant. And let's boot it up again. Cool. And then I'll choose floppy one. Go to where I've downloaded DOS, disk one. Okay just in time for that to hopefully boot up. Current date is the 20th of December, correct? And to new date, well, no, it's all correct. There we go, MS-DOS 3.3. So actually, I think it is a case of actually doing, we've got F-Disk. Looks like we've got F-Disk. Right, we can create a DOS partition, primary partition. Do you want to use the maximum size? Yes, I do. System will now restart. And we've rebooted again, so it's asking for the date. No, it's all fine. And then there isn't really any install program in DOS 3.3. So uh, what we've got, we've done our F disk. So we need to format the C drive. Yes, I'm sure. Oh. No, I had to actually put Y to confirm. Yes, brilliant. Okay, it's going off and doing that. How slow that is, I do not know. That wasn't too bad. Right, okay, that's formatted. So then I think we have to do sysc$ or sys, sys c colon system transferred yeah so it copies over the system files then i believe we just do the copy command so it's a basically everything to c yep and it's going ahead and copying everything from the floppy to the hard drive okay and because that's only disk one what we have to do is swap out the disks so we'll go to disk two open and then basically run the same command. Now, sadly, oh, it hasn't got a history. I can't press up. 
So we're going to type this all again to C, and then that's copying the contents of the second disk. Oh, it's got GW Basic, so we could do some programming in this. And the tree command and X copy as well. Awesome. Okay, so let's eject that disk. Okay. And then let's give this a reboot. Control Alt and Delete. Yeah. There we go. And it's asking for the date and the time. There we go. Uh, but now, as you see, we're on the C prompt. So we're running from a hard drive. So if I do DIR, door, DIR even. Yeah, there's all our files. Let's try GW Basic. Right, so we could like print. Hello, Amiga fans. Or actually, I should say DOS fans, shouldn't I? Fans? Fans? I can't type today. So we can do F3 to load, and like load a particular file, or save that. So F4 and save. Save it as uh, hello.bas. Close the quotes on that. I think so. It says OK. So uh, I think I can quit that. Can I do Control? How do I get out of this? This reminds me of this time in Vim. Well, I just did a Control Alt Delete, and yeah, I weren't sure how to exactly get out of GW Basic. Ah, it's asking me for the time again. But if I do a DIR. Yeah, there's my hello.bass file. So it did save it. So there we go. Anyway, that is a 386 running um, Microsoft DOS 3.3. And of course, we can close that down. So we can go back to the home page, go new machine, and make another machine as well, like um, you know, Pentium. Go next. And make a painting based PCI system. So we could put Windows 95 on this. Yep, and choose much faster processor, more RAM, 3D accelerated build as well. And yeah, it's totally up to you what you build, but this is a good starting step to the world DOS and I recommend that you check it out. Thank you for watching. Remember to give this video a like and I hope you all have a wonderful day.